All right, it's good to see you this evening at, uh, on this Wednesday night. I'm, I, uh, we're going to follow up and continue on talking about sin and evil in the world uh, from the Christian perspective because what we're, in the overall scheme of things, we're looking at, at why be Christian. And, uh, and one of the reasons is Christianity has the answers for why evil is in the world and why bad things happen to good people. That's the famous question. Books have been written with that title, Why Do Bad Things Happen uh, to Good People? If you were to ask a Buddhist uh, why bad things happen to good people, they would say it's because of the law of karma. Uh, and uh, they are reaping uh, w the result of bad things they did in a previous life. Now that makes a lot of sense for us to, to be punished in this life for a previous life and we don't even know that we had a previous life and that we're being punished for that. Uh, but that's what a Buddhist would say. So they say it makes perfect sense. It's because of a previous life or existence. Uh, but the world is full of uh, brutal acts and, uh, on good people. Uh, sex trafficking, I've, I've discovered, I, I've heard of it, and I know it's bad, but uh, I know now that it's much worse than most people know uh, in our country and around the world. Um, child perversion is a growing problem in our, in our world, murders of innocent people. Then you go all the way back to the Holocaust and how, you can, how, can, you, how can you explain six million of God's chosen people being gassed to death by Hitler and the Nazis. Some who don't believe would say, well, if God is who you claim him to be, uh, he must not be all powerful or he would not let all that kind of things and stuff happen. Or if he is existing, uh, he must not be as good as you say he is because surely a good God wouldn't let bad things happen like they do. That's what a lot of people think. But Christians understand the answer. And the answer can't be given apart from the fact that there is life after this world. There is life after death. You can't explain why bad things happen and why evil exists without going beyond the grave into the future. Uh, all of life must be measured by the whole. If we measure our existence only by what happens in this world, that, that, that gives no explanation as to why sin exists, bad exists, and and when bad things happen, there's no better future for us uh, if this were all there was. But we can understand evil and we can explain it uh, based on the fact that in the world to come, and you look at in the whole overall scheme of, of existence, uh, it is far better for the Christian than the bad would give us reason to believe. Mary, Queen of Scots, was beheaded by her half-sister, uh, Elizabeth I, Queen Elizabeth I. Uh, and... Uh, as she was being placed on the guillotine to be beheaded, she said these famous words, this is just my beginning. Because she believed, Mary Queen of Scots, believed that when she died, uh, her life was just starting in heaven. She had life after death. So the bad that was happening to her at that moment, losing her head, uh, was pretty bad. <laughs> but she was looking to the days to come. And so when we see the bad happen, as a believer in Christ, we can say, hey, we got better days ahead because God is good and God is great. Uh, the truth is that uh, we are often drawn to God in the worst of times. More people may come to know Christ as their Savior because some bad circumstances happened. For instance, 9-11 happened. And uh, uh, a lot of people turned to God. Uh, there was prayer all over the country. I went to a Houston Astros baseball game. Before the game, they invited a black Methodist pastor to come to the mound he went to the mound and he prayed the most evangelistic, Christ-centered prayer I've heard in a, in a place like that. That was as a result of 9-11. And that's just one example. When the two desert wars occurred in the 90s and beyond, uh, I was the chaplain at Camp Beauregard uh, and with a guard. And, uh, and I, I went from one service on Saturday to two. Uh, people would come and we would fill the chapel up because we were praying for our soldiers in the brigade who had gone to Iraq uh, for the war. Uh, people were, you would see signs posted on the road all over, all over America. Pray for our troops. Pray for America. Uh, turn to God. When bad things happen, so often we turn to God. Now, the reason bad things happen in this life is, uh, is because of the presence of sin. Now, that's the bottom line. We can talk about bad things that happen to us, but the real problem in this world is sin. And uh, the origin of sin is, mentioned, is told, told in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. 
We know the story. God told man that uh, in the garden there is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat of it. If you eat of it, you will die. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so at that moment, man was given a choice. Nobody can argue with that. God said, don't eat of it. That means they could eat of it if they chose to. So here's what happened. God created man in His image. What does that mean? His image isn't our physical. His image is our spiritual, our, our, our mental, our, our soul. And uh, God can make decisions. God knows all things. God is the intelligent creator of all things. Man was created in God's image, which means very clearly that God made man with intelligence. Uh, and He made us with intelligence and free will. Uh, the ability to make decisions is our intelligence. Animals can't do that. Uh, not even PETA can say that animals have intelligence. They, they know what to eat. Uh, they know where to sleep. They know how to get through the woods and get along. But, but uh, uh, animals don't have the intelligence to make decisions, to become more educated uh, like we do. We are made in the image of God with intelligence to make goodwill. Um, uh, intelligence now means more than knowledge. We, we, we don't all have the same degree of knowledge, but we all, all a man has the intelligence with which to make decisions with. Um, and uh, uh, so, so we, we can make decisions, but when we make decisions, we face the consequences of our decisions. Now, it is, now here's the picture. We have God. God is the Creator. His will for all of mankind is good. Uh, he wants all of us to enjoy what He has made. Uh, when he said after he finished creation it is good behold it is very good he wants us to enjoy it he wants it to stay good he didn't want our world to go like it is today he didn't want it to be filled with sin and, and death and danger and, and, and bad things happening to good people so you have God and his will but then you have Satan too Satan exists we won't get into the creation or the existence of Satan but we know he exists God cannot exist without evil present because the only way we know God is good is that the devil is bad um, and so so God exists he created us for good the devil exists and uh, and the Satan and the devil Satan Lucifer his desire is for man to not enjoy the beauty of God's creation he wants us to Leave God and follow Him. He wants the world to be in chaos. The devil has never been, a, been capable of saying or doing one good thing. Uh, he will never feed the hungry. He will never help the poor. He will try to make everybody hungry and everybody poor. And so here's the, here's the picture. In Adam, we see the decision-making process. We see God's will. God says, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Stay in this garden. Enjoy it forever. And he was walking with God in the cool of the day. Uh, he had no death to worry about. No sickness to worry about. No problems to worry about. He had all the food he wanted to eat. It was heaven on earth. That was God's will. Now listen to this. If that was God's will, why would anybody blame God for the bad that happens in this world? God's plan for us was good. He never created us for the bad. Who could possibly think less of God when God says, don't eat of that fruit because you will die if you do. I want you to enjoy heaven, uh, Eden on earth forever. Who could blame God for the, for the fall of man when, when God's will for, was for man to make a choice for the good that God provides and not the bad that Satan presents? So there's God and His will. And, there's, there's, and on the other side is Satan. And Satan comes into the garden as a serpent to beguile Adam and Eve. He seeks to destroy the Garden of Eden. Satan can't enjoy the garden, so he don't, he don't want anybody to enjoy it. He wants to take man away from God out of the garden for himself as a prince in this world. Satan is the prince outside the garden. Nothing good about him. And so Adam now is in the middle. Adam is in the middle. God's on one side. You've seen the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. Uh, well, that, that's what's happening literally. God, Adam is in the garden. He has a decision to make. God says, don't eat of it. Satan says, eat of it. Because if you, God says you'll die, but he didn't mean that. And he really didn't say that. They cannot avoid the decision. Adam and Eve must make the decision. 
either, either to eat of it or not to eat of it. And so they had to decide to obey God or to trust Satan and follow his lead. God told him the truth. Satan told him a lie. And you know what the choice was? In the middle, the intelligent man made a choice to eat of the fruit, to discover something he didn't know, but he was so curious about. He followed Satan's example. And the long story short, he was cast out of the garden into the desert, into the wilderness, into the place filled with briars and thistles, to live in a dangerous world where Abel would be murdered by his own brother, where idolatry would, would, would flourish and continues to flourish today. You know, outside the garden, Adam now is no longer living forever. He's going to die. Uh, he is spiritually dead. Outside the garden, there is death because again, Abel will die and Adam and Eve will die. Outside the garden, there are dangers that were not present in Eden. God gave Eden. Satan gave outside of Eden. Uh, there are countries you know, in the world that you and I don't want to go to. I'm not going to name them, but there are countries where Christianity is outlawed and where we as Americans are hated. And if we would go to some parts of the country of the world as Americans and as Christians, we're going to be in danger. More danger than we're here in right here and now. And if it happens, if we were to go to one of those countries and we're Americans and we're seen and we're Christians and we're known, we could very well be murdered. We could very well be ar uh, arrested or, or, or captured and held for a hostage. But we're there by our choice. We're, we don't have to go there. And, uh, and we better not. But if we were to go to one of those countries, we're no longer under the umbrella of safety provided by our, our country as Americans. I have a dear friend that I, I baptized. He was the vice, the, the vice commander at uh, one of our major army bases in this country. He retired and hired as a contract and went to one of those countries. And it was there he, he died by an explosion. Uh, he was in a dangerous world by choice. He, was, he could have been killed here, but it was safer here than it was there. And he died there. Well, God forced Adam and Eve out of the garden into a place of darkness, into a place that we live today, a place where bad things happen to good people, a place where bad things happen uh, because of us, not because of God. And so when somebody says, why do bad things happen to good people? The only answer is, well, it's our fault. Not the person to whom it happens, because that would make us the friends of Job, uh, Bildad, and Eliphar, and, and, Zophar, and, 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 and Zophar, I think. Uh, we don't tell somebody you're suffering because you're a sinner. But we all suffer because we're all sinners. And some suffer more than others because the world has fallen in sin. We have, uh, Romans 3.23 is not just a verse that tells us we're sinners. It tells us why bad things happen in this world. He says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're no longer in Eden. We're now in the dark world. We're not in glory. We're in the world. And so bad things can happen. God warns us. God warned us in the beginning that if we go our way, we're going to pay a terrible price. Now, we have sinned just like Adam. We can't point fingers at Adam and blame him for all our problems. But we have sinned our own sin and we follow the example of Adam. Our world today is continuing to grow worse and worse and worse. Our new leader has signed an executive order uh, rescinding the 1776 commission, rewriting history. He has signed a, uh, uh, an executive order allowing boys who become girls to run races against girls. And uh, no one has said a thing uh, on that side of the issue to, to protest the unfair treatment of our young ladies. Um, He's closed the, the, the XL pipeline. Thousands of jobs have been cost. And here's what's going on in our country today. Leaders who are, who are following Satan's leadership are saying we're going, to, we're going to provide millions of jobs. And all they've done is destroy thousands of jobs. They're saying one thing, doing the complete opposite. And they're saying it to make people believe them in spite of what they see. That's the kind of world we live in. Uh, we live in a world that's so bad. Now... And it's getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, uh, crimes in cities are now going unabated. Uh, justice is denied for victims of crimes in favor of illegal immigrants. Uh, people can't fly into airports from other countries, but, but thousands can come across our borders unchecked over, of the COVID virus. 
And we would ask God, where are you? Why are bad things happening to our country? God, why is our world getting so bad? I was asked after 9-11 as a chaplain and a pastor in Leesville, where was God? Why did God allow this to happen at night in New York? Well, God was present with those who were there. God was with those who were dying. And God was with our country. But the evil happened because Satan is the power and the prince of this world. Now, what is our response to evil? Very quickly. Uh, some people blame God. They get mad at Him and blame Him for everything. Listen, God doesn't do anything bad. Somebody said, well, He could have stopped it. Well, uh, God didn't stop us from eating the fruit in the garden. God, God gave us a choice. And when we make a choice to live outside the umbrella of God's protection, we have to pay the consequences. Uh, we, 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 just, we can't ignore the fact that we live in a dangerous world and bad things are going to happen. It's not God's fault. It's our fault. Uh, uh, but we can run to God as a child runs to a parent when, when uh, evil comes. The Bible says that our God is with us in the midst of bad things that are happening. God is there to pick us up. He's there to bind up our wounds, to heal the brokenhearted. In 1 Peter 5, 7, the Bible says, Cast all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. God cares for you. Some people blame God. They get angry. And, they, and, and, and some will say, well, God doesn't love you. God doesn't care for you. But God does. So we cast our problems, cast our care, cast our pains and our, our issues to Him. I love the picture of our Lord. I may have shared it last, Sunday, last Wednesday. When Jesus is standing up and He says, he says to them in Matthew chapter 11, uh, He says, Come unto Me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take My yoke upon you and learn of Me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Uh, that's the God we serve. The God who comes to us when Satan has done his worst, and He says, Come to Me, I'll take care of you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you rest. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, that not well-known Old Testament book, the Bible says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. In a world where evil exists, where sin is, where bad things happen, God's compassion and God's mercy never, never leaves us. When Jesus was confronted time and time again with multitudes, when He came to this earth, uh, that's full of darkness and sin. The Bible continued to say that when he would see the multitude, it would say often, Jesus was moved with compassion. That's the God we serve. Let me tell you, when something bad happens, the first one we need to turn to is God. The first one to help us is God Almighty. We don't turn against Him. We don't blame Him. He's the only one who can help us in our time of need and despair. Well, evil is the absence of good in this world. That happened when we were expelled out of, out of Eden. God was present in Eden. God is not here on earth in the sense that He was in Eden. He is everywhere. But Satan is the prince and power of this air. And, uh, and so that, that has some, I hope, makes some degree of, of sense and, and uh, reason for why bad things happen to good people and why sin exists in this world. Uh, it cannot be avoided. It does exist. And you know, sin appears to be more prevalent than righteousness. You, you just look around and study the world that we live in today. There are a lot of good people in it. But I think the bad outnumber the good uh, because we live in a fallen world. Our answer is Jesus Christ. Trust Him. Love Him. Have faith in Him. Let's pray. Father, thank You for being with us for never leaving us nor forsake us. Even in this world that's fallen from Your glory, You continue to watch over us. And when we trip, when we fail, when we fall, when we're hurt, Father, You're right there to pick us up. Thank You for being with us. And thank You for the hope we have in eternal life that one day there will be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more death, no more pain, for all the former things will be passed, will be passed away. And we will live and we will see things as Adam did before the fall. Thank You for that blessed hope we have. In Jesus' name.